There are a lot of crazy things going on in oil and energy markets lately in just the last couple weeks. And a lot of it is not only from market manipulation, as I've covered in the last couple weeks, with how these five or six large governments, at least that's what we know of. We don't know exactly how many governments participated in dumping their strategic petroleum oil reserves onto the market. We don't know the exact real numbers. We just know what was said in the press releases. Who knows how much of that was actually the truth. And yet the oil price, the WTI, West Texas Intermediate oil price, went from only a couple weeks ago on the verge of a breakout to $80 or higher. It crashed in a very short amount of time down to the high 60s. It's now back around $71 a barrel. So the manipulation by governments has managed to slow down the oil price increase, at least temporarily. However, gas prices are still rising here in the US. They are very, very high. Despite the oil price being only around $71 a barrel, gasoline prices here in the US in many, many areas are still well above $3 a gallon. So there's a big disconnect there, problems with the supply chain. But the majority of the problems in oil, in natural gas, in uranium, in all other energy markets are not because of capitalism and free markets. They are because of policy mistakes, egregious policy mistakes that have compounded over decades by politicians, bureaucrats, regulators, and the people in charge of running these national oil companies, which are government-run oil companies in so many different countries. So there's been trillions upon trillions in stolen money, misallocated capital, on bad infrastructure. Either the funds were stolen or they were straight out misallocated. And I could name administration after administration after administration with all the problems and the waste, fraud, corruption, and abuse. With the George W. Bush administration, they wasted insane amounts on corn ethanol, subsidizing that, forcing corn ethanol into people's gas tanks. That was a waste of currency and capital. Also, advanced biofuels are not economic unless oil prices are, stay well above triple digits. The Obama administration wasted enormous amounts of subsidies on wind and solar. The problem with wind and solar, they cannot be used for baseload electricity generation in the majority of countries on the planet. They are not good for baseload electricity generation as of right now. Only natural gas and nuclear power are reliable forms of electricity generation for baseload electricity generation for power plants. Solar and wind as of now are still intermittent and there's still enormous battery problems that are not going to be solved in the next probably five years, probably at least 10, 15, 20 years before a lot of the battery and storage problems. Also with the electrical grid problems, so the oil market, and we're starting to see warnings now, warnings from oil company CEOs, warnings from Saudi Arabia's Aramco and oil and energy ministers about forced energy transition by politicians, bureaucrats, regulators trying to force ESG, which is extremely corrupt. ESG, a lot of those funds are wasted. Look at the parasites, the hedge funds, the institutional investors, private equity are flooding into corrupt ESG companies that are managing to get unbidded government contracts or because they paid off the right lobbyist or politician or bureaucrat or they have a friend or family member in the right position, they're getting all these unbidded government contracts. This is not solving problems in the marketplace. This is not helping with cheap electricity for people. This is not helping solve any problems in the market. This is just straight up currency creation and corruption from the cancel on effect, waste, fraud, corruption, and abuse, misallocation of capital. So the oil industry has a lot of problems going forward in the next couple years. I would say definitely under five years, we're going to see new price floors in oil of probably a hundred dollars a barrel because of the lack of investment by these national oil companies, by private sector oil companies, and because politicians, bureaucrats, and regulators are trying to force these companies, whether it is activist investors trying to force the CEO of ExxonMobil out because they're not investing enough in ESG and green energy and advanced biofuels and solar and wind. And then ExxonMobil on top of this is 
selling their natural gas assets here in the United States. Some of their better natural gas assets they're selling. So there's a bunch of bad capital decisions, but a lot, unfortunately, in the energy markets, a lot of these bad decisions, whether that's nuclear power plants that are not being built here in the Western world, the United States, it is very, very difficult through the permitting process, the capital costs to build nuclear power plants. It's difficult even to get uranium mines approved here in the United States. So all the problems here are not free market related with energy markets, the lack of quality, cheap electricity available. It's not a free market or capitalism problem. It is a problem with politicians, bureaucrats, central planners, and regulators that they put rules, regulations, taxes, red tape. If the oil price gets too high, they will march the oil company CEOs in front of Congress and threaten windfall profits taxes. They've already threatened to do this back, I think, in 2007 or 2008 when oil prices hit $140, $130, $140 a barrel. And they did that in the 1970s as well in the U.S. So that could happen again. You may see that again in the near future. Just a mess. I've had people say that the larger oil and energy companies are not making smart investments and are instead focusing on short-term shareholder returns. There has been some of that. ExxonMobil has been one of the worst ones. They've loaded their balance sheet with debt. They've done a ton of share buybacks with debt. ExxonMobil is starting to make more investments though into some of their oil production growth and oil reserve growth. But the other larger oil and energy companies, the private ones like Chevron, Royal Debt Shell, some of the others have been more focused on natural gas and LNG investments because demand is more stable for that over the long term. The demand growth for natural gas and LNG, it's cleaner burning. The odds of it being used in electrical generation are much, much higher. And politicians, bureaucrats, regulators seem more anti-coal and anti-oil than natural gas. They're also anti-nuclear too in many, many countries, which is unfortunate because we should be spending all countries should be spending more millions of dollars more for research and development for advanced nuclear technologies for better nuclear power plants instead the exact opposite is happening in pretty much every country where it's more costly takes more time and capital to build a nuclear power plant even one of them Finally, if you like content like this and want to help keep content like this free so it doesn't all end up behind a paywall or you want far more in-depth content research, financial education, and analysis than I provide in these short little free videos, there are now over 190 articles and audio podcasts behind the paywall exclusive for my patrons, all for the cost of a Starbucks cup of coffee per month, only $5 a month. I think it is one of the best deals out there. And just in the last 23 or so weeks, there are now 36 new articles and audio podcasts, including six new audio podcasts out in the last two and a half to three weeks on a lot of interesting topics about global macro companies and sectors. And in the next week or two, there might be another one or two audio podcasts out about another uranium market update and also on oil and natural gas. So if I could wrap up this short little video very quickly, there is a tremendous lack of underinvestment by national oil companies. So these are these government-run oil companies in Venezuela, Indonesia, Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Iran, Nigeria. I could go on and on about finding new oil reserves and natural gas reserves, growing oil production, growing natural gas production. There is a lack of investment for many, many decades, trillions of dollars. There was an investment bank research report that came out in the last six months claiming that there was only a $800 billion lack of CapEx, capital expenditure investment in the oil and natural gas industry. I would 100% disagree. Back when my day job was an oil and gas analyst back in 2013, the number was actually over a trillion dollars back then. The majority of the CapEx over the last 12 years, a lot of it has gone into U.S. shale oil and gas. A lot of it was subsidized. A lot of it was unprofitable. And a lot of that supply has been offline now for the last 20 plus months. A lot of that shale oil and shale natural gas has been offline. And that was the marginal supply for the rest of the globe. There has been a fair amount globally of investment into natural gas and LNG because the demand picture for natural gas demand, especially for electricity generation for decades to come, is a lot more stable 
as politicians, bureaucrats, central planners, and regulators try to prevent oil demand from rapidly growing in many different countries, especially here in the Western world. Although oil demand in emerging markets is still slated to continue to start growing again, although not at the pace it was prior to the pandemic. So the bottom line, and I put an article on the right-hand side of your screen, there is potentially 3.3 trillion in stranded assets. So these are assets that can be written down and that might be closer to the lack because not only are there assets that there's not enough capital to maintain property, plan, and equipment to keep those assets from going into disrepair, but there's also been for decades now a lack of investment, especially from national oil companies, because the total amount of oil reserves on the planet, the largest amount of oil reserves on the planet that are left are from, if you actually believe them, are from national oil companies. So like Saudi Arabia, their Aramco, which just had a partial IPO not too long ago, Iraq, Iran, Nigeria, Venezuela, those types of countries that have a lot of oil. But a lot of those countries they've actually started consuming an enormous amount more oil and natural gas inside their own country. So if you look at the data over the years, because normally the gasoline in those countries is heavily subsidized for the locals, there's less and less oil and natural gas to export over the years. So we're at right now around $70 a barrel oil. It looks like some shale oil production is going to start coming back online, but we're not at an oil price. We're not anywhere near triple digits again, where a lot of new investment in oil is going to be made. This is setting up over the next couple years for a big oil price spike because of the lack of investment on the supply side. So if demand starts to come back for oil, there's gonna be immense supply side problems. And a lot of this is not because of the free market is not because of capitalism. It's because of politicians, bureaucrats, regulators, and central planners. You have the Biden administration preventing oil and natural gas drilling on federal lands in New Mexico, which is one of the best oil fields for the Permian Basin. You have the Biden administration stopping pipelines. Okay, that's not a problem with free markets or capitalism. Yes, politicians, bureaucrats, central planners, regulators, and activist investors that are ESG are going to blame capitalism. They're going to probably try to replace CEOs of these larger oil and energy companies and force them to invest in solar, wind, advanced biofuels that are uneconomic, but it's only going to increase the waste, fraud, corruption, and abuse. There's still going to be a lack of investment in natural gas, in LNG, in nuclear power, and that is the problem. The problem is the globe, the planet, especially these national oil companies, because private sector oil companies can start making investments. They can do mergers and acquisitions if they want to replace oil and natural gas reserves. But you're not seeing that out of these national oil companies. These national oil companies are so corrupt, so inefficient. It's nuts. And they control the majority of oil and natural gas reserves left on the planet. And they're the ones not making the proper investments. And they're the ones, their governments are, that are subsidizing below market prices, oil demand and gasoline demand in their own countries.